Head movement! Head movement! Head movement! Making a career in professional sport can prove to be difficult at the best of times. So it comes as no surprise that many of MMA's finest have turned to the jobs market to make ends meet. This is a list of high profile fighters who have taken second professions in their career, ranging from the heroic, colourful and in some cases, downright surreal. Welcome to INC and these are 5 USC fighters with second jobs. If there's one thing Steve Miocic loves more than anything else, it's the city of Cleveland. So it should come as no surprise that the 33 year old looks to give back to the local community whenever possible. Outside the octagon, Mejic works as a firefighter in the Awkward Village Fire Department, as well as serving as a paramedic whenever his busy schedule allows. Although holding down two high profile jobs will be enough for most men, Mejic has not let his profession get in the way of his career, winning the heavyweight title from Fabrizio Verdum before making a successful defence against Alistair Overeem in front of his home crowd at UFC 203. Despite earning $600,000 for the fight, Miocic has no plans to give up the day job, stating, I love helping people, I love helping people in my city, I just like helping people, I love what I do. Maybe not the most eloquent of men, but certainly one of the most devoted. The outsider's view of MMA is one of uneducated folks destroying each other for our entertainment. Just try telling that to Shane Carwin. A former college standout, Carwin returned to school after a career in football failed to materialise, earning degrees in mechanical engineering and environmental technology and securing a job as a design engineer for the North World Water Department in Colorado. Although blessed with the security and kudos that comes with his work, Carwin doubled his career with a successful spell in MMA, where his punching power and all action style soon saw the greedy native dub the Mike Tyson of the UFC. Carwin would live up to the hype in the octagon, picking up 10 successive first round finishes before claiming the interim heavyweight title against Frank Mir at USC 111. Despite offers to commit to the sport full time, Carwin retained his job throughout the rest of his MMA career, eventually calling time on his involvement in the sport following a succession of injuries in June 2013. Names like Ronda Rousey have attempted to use MMA as the catalyst for a career in Hollywood. Walt Weird prospect Nick Hine decided to do things somewhat differently. As well as being a mainstay of the UFC's European shows, Hein has been working as the star of a sitcom in his native Germany, chronicling the story of three incompetent brothers as the attempt to run a funeral parlour together, and increasing the profile of the 32 year old in a country where MMA is still outlawed on television. Despite the show's surprise success, Hein has not allowed his celebrity to derail his MMA career, amassing a record of 14 wins and 2 losses, including a victory over Tae Jong Ban at Fight Night 93. To add further fuel to the mix, Hein's acting career came after a decade working as a policeman in his native Cologne, where his strength and intimidating presence soon earned him the nickname Judge Dredd. So actor, good looking, and used to be in the police force, I suddenly feel like crap. Stepping into the octagon comes with its fair share of hazards, but for Tim Kennedy the danger is just a drop in the ocean. For the past 20 years Kennedy combined MMA with a role in the special forces of the US Army, reaching the rank of sergeant with his battalion and serving in both Iraq and Afghanistan over a two year period. One's a sport, one has a ref, one has gloves, one has you know an equally trained participant that volunteered to be there, you know the other one is, is blood and horror and nightmares and sleepless nights, you know, like, there's nothing alike between the two. Despite his military commitments, Kennedy would go on to have a solid career in MMA, competing in both Strike Force and the UFC at the same time, and picking up high profile wins over Robbie Lawler and Michael Bisping. Kennedy would go on to announce his retirement from the sport in 2017 after losing to Kelvin Gastelum at UFC 206, amassing a record of 16 wins and 6 losses. Former middleweight champion Rich Franklin was known for schooling people inside the octagon, but many won't be surprised to know this stretched outside the ring as well. During his early years, Franklin combined a career in MMA while studying to work in education, earning a master's degree at the University of Cincinnati before securing a job as a maths teacher at the Oak Hills High School in his native Ohio. Despite wishing to pursue MMA full time, 
Though earnings meant that Franklin was forced to combine roles for the next four years. Maintaining his composure in the classroom whilst emerging as one of the UFC's most exciting middleweight prospects. Yeah, I was, I was actually uh, in an interview one time and I told somebody that was part of an anger management program because I, <laughs> I hit, a, hit a student and the school made me do this and there was like dead silence in the studio. <laughs> After winning the title from Evan Tanner at UFC 51, Franklin made a full-time commitment to the sport. Picking up wins over Ken Shamrock, Vondale Silva and Chuck Liddell before calling time on his career in 2015. And now a few honourable mentions. Big John McCarthy brings his authority as a referee into his day job as a policeman. Junior DeSantos went from running a toy shop to toying with his opponents. The Diaz brothers are known for being great gardeners. Sort of. I got you, homie! This is the INC. Keep up the good work.